Hi, this is one of my absolute favorite form factor multimeters of all time. It's the Fluke 37. And you may not have seen this before because it's a bit of a, one of the more obscure Fluke multimeters, but I just, I've always loved this thing. I thought that its form factor has always been absolutely fantastic. It's basically a hybrid between a bench multimeter and a portable multimeter. It's uh, battery powered. There is no mains option uh, for this thing it's got a thousand hours battery life runs from a 9 volt battery it's a uh, 3200 count meter and it is basically uh, the identical uh, version of the Fluke 27 which you've seen me do a video on before and this is a classic uh, rugged Fluke multimeter and it's basically I believe it's exactly the same pretty much identical guts inside uh, the Fluke 37 but I haven't actually uh, torn one of these down before so it's going to be interesting to take a look at it and what I I just love the form factor um, the fact that it has a carry handle like this that you can carry it around sure like you know if, if it's just got the functionality of this right why do you need all of this case and everything if you can just get the exact same functionality in this meter here well the whole point of it of course is that well, you've got all this space in here to store your test leads or your, you know, your adapters or whatever. And you can see that the multimeter part of it is basically just inside here. And the rest of it is just the shell to hold stuff and have a carry handle like that. But I love the fact that the face of it is actually sloping like that. So when you use it on a bench like this, it actually uh, faces up towards you and it's it's just a beautiful thing. But it's got a few more tricks up its sleeve as well in that uh, this bale on the bottom, which is a bit how you do it. It's, it is not the best design at all. I will readily admit that. Um, you can see that one of the uh, things has broken off here, but of course you can use it with no uh, tilting bale at all and it's still going to be sort of you know good for bench use in that it's uh, you know this screen is actually tilted a bit upwards like that but that's not ideal for the LCD as you can see at this angle sort of here at sort of like the steeper angles coming down you can't see it that well so it is better to actually have uh, the tilting bale on the uh, bottom like that but you can actually install this in different ways so if you've actually got it up on a bench you can install it backwards like that and then it will cut it will actually slope downwards so it's flat like that so if you've got it up on a high shelf on a test bench or something then you can get your traditional flat form factor face like that brilliant of course it takes up a fair bit of height here on your uh, shelf but still you know that really is quite versatile and you can also stand it up on the floor like this so if you've got it on the floor and you're doing you know you don't have any bench uh, room at all you can actually put it on the floor and just have it tilt up like that or you can actually take the tilting bale off and it just sits on its end like that so um yeah it really is quite a versatile stand even if it's a bit uh, the design of it bit how you do it and I love the fact that they have the different operational modes actually uh, molded into the back of it none of that sticker rubbish oh fantastic made in the United States of America there's a serial number for those playing along at home and uh, this one comes from the Central Texas College yes I got scored this one uh, from eBay in the US whilst I said it's not mains powered it does actually have a battery eliminator on the side which is deeply embedded in there for uh, safety reasons I would uh, presume but with a thousand hours battery life on this thing uh, but still you know a thousand hours um, it does not seem to have an auto off uh, function I just leave this thing and it just stays on forever some people love that anyway this with all its space in here of course would be an ideal candidate for that 10,000 plus hour multimeter uh, design with just install like a big uh, primary battery in here and it, it would literally last forever you get like a hundred thousand hours operation with that much space and it's basically got identical specs to the Fluke 27 as I uh, showed it's a basic accuracy uh, 0.1% it's got 3200 100 uh, counts about 0.2 percent on ohms uh, current isn't that terrific burden voltage I can't remember the exact burden voltage but it's not that terrific but you know it's got your basic functionality it's got your diode and continuity none of that capacitance rubbish because I think this thing I don't have an exact date if you do leave it in the comments down below but I believe it dates from the late 
80s, I'm not quite sure, could be the early uh, 90s. But it's got your ohms and your microamps, and of course it's got the classic uh, Fluke auto hold as well, so we can just whack that on there, beautiful. Diode mode uh, compliance voltage, 2.5 volts, so you know, it's not the best thing out there, especially considering it's powered uh, from a 9 volt uh, battery, but you know, it, it does the business. And continuity mode, eh, it's not the fastest thing out there, but you know, it's loud enough, and of course it's got the bar graph, and you'll notice that doesn't have any of that enunciator rubbish, you know you're on volts, damn it, you don't need a V on there. And yes, of course, as is typical with our secondhand flukes, this one, uh, <laughs> don't know how old it is, but yeah, it's still within spec. I've measured it and it's, <laughs> it's fine. And this was designed in the days before any of that cat rubbish. So um, anyway, let's go in and let's have a squiz. I just open the battery and fuse compartment like that. And it's a bit how you're doing. Uh, the battery just um, like just flaps around in the breeze in there. Um, there's really like nothing. And of course, you've got your two main uh, current HRC fuses. And there seems to be a little third ceramic jobby down there. I'm not sure what the deal is there. So let's take this bad boy apart, shall we? Sorry, I had to uh, turn it on before I took it apart. I was just so excited. It's the Fluke 37. I've always wanted one of these. That looks like threaded metal inserts to me. Split what's... I think the bottom lifts off. I think that's the deal rather than the top, which is interesting. And there you go. We're in like Flynn. There's our big... Uh... Ooh, that's interesting. That's like some sort of weird alloy. That is, it's, I don't, don't know if that's steel. Um, yeah, that looks like, if anyone can identify that, it's more aluminium-like. None of that aluminium rubbish. I know it's made in the United States of America. But, um, yeah, that just, uh, that just has the feel of, of some sort of aluminium. Um, probably to get the weight down, perhaps, but I've never seen a coating like that before. It's very unusual. Let's just check the current draw on basic DC volts. And oh, it does take a bit to boot up. So that was the boot up current. And now it's, uh, yeah, uh, 0.3 milliamps. Oh, sniff of an oily rag stuff. Same on the ohms range as well. But oh, almost doubles on AC volts. Jeez. Check it out. If you wanted to, that could be your bench meter. Um, <laughs> you could just like 3D print like a smaller uh, well, you could hack into the case, with the existing case, really, and uh, just use the front bit. You could hack all the back of it off, and uh, you could 3D print a case for that, and that'd make a really sweet little bench meter. Hands up if you want me to do that. Um, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> you could certainly do it. You can see how it's, unfortunately, like you can't just have a case going straight up like that, a square one. It's got to you know, get around that uh, shield there. So it's designed to lay back like that. It's still tilted. That is, I, I just love it. I just, I, I want that. My money's on that being some sort of magnesium alloy, I suspect. We could scrape some off and uh, attempt to burn it. There you have it, two metal threaded insert screws through there, and we're through to the PCB. The classic Fluke chipset, of course, uh, down here, that's their custom ASIC. Uh, this is a Rev C board, I don't know uh, what one's made it into production. If you know any details, I don't even know if that's a date code, 1385? 85 seems uh, too early for this, but... And the classic square PCB traces. I mean, you know, come on, give me a break. Who laid this thing out? Where's the artistry? There you go, it is 1985. Copyright fluke 1985. I thought it was like, oh, like late, really late 80s at the... Um, earliest, but no, um, it, maybe that is the date code on the chip. If you do know the actual uh, release date of this thing, then uh, please let us know. But yeah, it's as early as 1985. There you go. And the fuses there, it all goes through uh, gigantic standoffs. None of that wiring rubbish. There you go. Beautiful. And they come directly from the input sockets too. Look at that. I mean, there's just like, there's nothing. There's no trace around there at all. It just goes straight through. I mean, you can't get uh, better isolation than that, really. Really quite nice. But they've got the room to spare. And they've removed uh, some of the solder masks just to get the solder coat on there. I've done a video on that. Uh, just increase the current on a couple of uh, traces there. There you go. But uh, as for the wiring, there's the uh, ground input jack. 
that's actually got wire in buggering off through a little ferrite in there and um yeah that goes off somewhere inside oh. there's your positive input there as i said your ground so it's got a wire going over here somewhere we'll see when we get it out but uh yeah basically two input uh, high voltage resistors there so uh, yeah the clearance is phenomenal no thought given to uh creepage in terms of uh slots though and your alloy case like this it actually has all the adjustments on there and they're actually molded in there and they line up with or your adjustment trimmer pots down there. There you go. Okay, it seems like there's a board to board interconnect down there. So I think that's all going to lift off there. If I pull that out, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. And we're out. We're out. There you go. Two board construction there. Once again, copyright 1985 John Fluke Manufacturing Co. That's a Rev D and made in the United States of America again Murata buzzer and we'll check out the uh, front panel uh, display board here and there's not much happening here I mean this uh, little Sermit trimmer here it's got to be for the LCD contrast there's an ICL 76 uh, 1 1 op amp over here uh, a couple of trannies doing some I don't know, switching or whatnot you know not much else so yeah um, there's no high voltage on that board it's just a button and uh, LCD board and the switch, you can see, comes through here, and ta-da! There it is. There's all the magic. Once again, copyright 1985. Uh, it's not a, none of that PCB mount uh, <laughs> range switch rubbish with the contacts. It's uh, all in one uh, wafer switch. Thank you very much. Contacts still looking pretty good. Nick down there. Good thing is there. You should be able to get in there and easily uh, clean those. But yeah, they look... I look not too shabby after, uh, well, geez, how old is this? Hang on, I need more than 10 fingers. Uh, like 36 years, anyone? <laughs> That's assuming it was actually made in 85. Um, it was certainly uh, designed and laid out in 85. You can see the main uh, Fluke ASIC, of course, that's where it all happens. There's basically nothing else in uh, the Fluke multimeters of this uh, period. And they've got a nice little cutout there on the backside of the uh, chip that was common in uh, the early 70 series of Flukes and whatnot. I can't remember the 27 offhand. I think it's the same. Anyway, a couple of trimmer caps down here and another trimmer cap, trimmer resistor, trimmer cap, so that, you know, we're doing all sorts of AC stuff there. Um, but then we've got a little shield there. Thank you very much. Um, and there's our, yep, thick film hybrid resistor network in there. So that's doing all the magic. Those things don't drift over the years. Um, there's our uh, external DC uh, input jack if you want to use that for your 300 microamps. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, another couple of uh, tag tants um yeah i don't know they could go the way of the dodo eventually but they're still hanging in there obviously and uh let's go over and check out the input circuitry because they do claim that uh, this has rugged input circuitry on it but anyway here's the positive input uh here and and as i said um two big high voltage resistors there so that's absolutely fantastic so obviously they've got uh, one for like a different path here and look at all the mobs they've got here. Oh, that one, okay, that's across both of them like that. So they've got two mobs and then the, do they split that in the middle? I don't know, I'm not gonna uh, revert and then oh, they go down there. I don't know, I'm not gonna reverse engineer the uh, front end. Those playing along at home can certainly do that. Anyway, here's the uh, ground terminal and that, uh, oh, looks like, yep, yeah, we've got a loop through the uh, ferrite there. I thought I had another wire, but it's just actually looped over and that's going over uh, here and that's to your uh, diode, standard diode bridge uh, protection there, but not only do they have the diode bridge, they've got another, what looks like another bridge configuration here. Uh, Bueller? Bueller? Anyway, there's our 10 amp current shunt there. Um, that'd be our other uh, shunt resistor there for our other ranges. And uh, that's about all she wrote. By the way, the smaller fuse here are only 250 volt rated. It is uh, for a smaller fuse range. Unless I'm mistaken, I don't see any PTCs in there. It's just all MOVs. MOVs as far as the eye can see. That's a lot for the day. Have five MOVs in there, but uh, you can see that they do actually have um, isolation slots 
cut all in here for your uh, creepage. But, you know, they didn't bother to do that around the import. I guess they didn't, uh, you know, deem that they needed that. But anyway, there's not much else to it, is there? Um, that's a pretty typical uh, construction of, like, 1980s uh, flukes. If you open up any of your Fluke uh, 70 series, um, you won't see anything too much different in there. Just like all the uh, resistors like this, they come from the factory. Um, actually, with the leads bent like that and formed so that they can go into and with the extra insulation on top. <laughs> nice. I was a little bit concerned about the uh, strain relief on the battery snaps there, but there you go. They've got little uh, ferrules uh, going into the board there like that, so that's okay, but I would have, you know, I would have liked to have seen a better battery solution, but hey, even the, you know, the Fluke 80 series has still got the same battery snap solution. Ugh. And given our guard trace around there like that, I'm going to assume that that is our voltage reference. Can we get a number on that? So yes, that is very uh, Fluke 1980s for sure. There are some things I like about it in terms of like the external uh, fuse board and stuff like that, but you know, the battery holder implementation and some of the layout things, that's, you know, it, it's not as a, Fluke were never, uh, you know, masters in like actual electronic PCB design and stuff like that. I mean, just the layouts, just, yeah. But that was, you know, that was typical of Fluke back in the day, but they actually engineered the circuits well, though. And this case design, well, I, you know, it's really quite nice. I can see why you come up the concept of like a sloping uh, front multimeter like that. It has its advantages, but why? I don't believe, please leave it in the comments down below if I'm wrong, but I don't believe anyone else has done such a form factor. The Fluke 37 was it. Um, so uh, yeah, I just, I just think it's very cool. <laughs> so he's whacked that on there like that. Bob's your uncle. But there you go, that's a look at the absolutely unique classic Fluke 37. Now we know uh, the date from at least designed in 85, at least uh, was uh, released in 86 onwards. Hands up if you had one of these, used one. Do you like the form factor? Would you like to see this again? Because I just think there's a market out there for a bench multimeter with that sort of form factor you know maybe not with like the carry like the probe carry holder and everything like everyone goes to like pouches and stuff these days in the carry handle and stuff like that but let us know i i just think this is a real sexy looking uh sort of like hybrid bench portable meter i'd love to see a as i said like many many thousand hour battery life bench meter on the market. I'd, 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 no fluke re-released this in some form. I'd probably buy one with all the modern functionality and stuff. Would you? I don't know. Leave it down in the comments. Anyway, I just love this thing. Um, always have. I thought it was fantastic. The first time I ever saw it, I was just blown away by the form factor. So for 1985, it actually was, you know, fairly well equipped. Of course, it had the uh, touch hole and it had uh, conductance mode as well. We can go in there. Nano Siemens, if you Nano Siemens fanboys. And, uh, you know, relative min-max and all that sort of jazz. But is it a useful meter these days? Well, yeah, it's, you know, if you can pick one up it's cheap, it's still like, it sit this on your bench. Um, but as I said, like, it doesn't seem to have auto power off. Um, so you've got to switch the thing off. It does take a little bit to boot up there but you know it's not too bad and of course I've done a video on the uh, Fluke uh, 27 and how it was practically identical uh, functionality and uh, specs so if you can pick either of these up in uh, good condition uh, they'll still serve you well for uh, quite some time to come so it'd be nice to have a bit more modern uh, functionality like you know super fast continuity and uh, capacitance and you know uh, some stuff like that but ah uh, geez I, I don't know I think it's a winner Jeez, I reckon there's got to be a niche market out there for this form factor. Come on. Am I the only one that thinks so? So anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. And I'm on all the alternative platforms. Absolutely everything. I'm everywhere like a rash. Catch you next time.